Hey guys, I'm all back again. Welcome to day 24 in the life of the Galaxy S23. Today I'm going to start off by talking about how I set up my home screen. Let me just unlock my screen right there. Working super smooth for once. I keep my home screen really simple. If you swipe to the right, you can see the they're calling it Discovery these days. So this is where I get all my news. It is curated to my taste, whatever articles I read. I just tap on it and then from there Google tend to recommend me things that I like to read so I don't really have to go around look for a new source or anything like that and if I don't like any of the option I just swipe down to refresh the content I'm a big fan of basketball so I get a lot of basketball contents I read a lot of news on mobile so they give me some Samsung news here you do get some free Galaxy Buds if you pre-order the A54. That sounds interesting. So that's what I do throughout my day. I just sit on the Discover page whenever I have free time. Samsung do offer pretty decent Galaxy Buds. And I'm just trying to figure out whether or not this is available worldwide or it's only specific countries. So these Buds were released in 2021. I'm not a big audio person myself. I feel like all these headphones, <laughs> they all sound pretty similar. Whether it's a $200 headphone, a $50 headphone. I don't listen to music long enough to really tell the difference to what is really good or the bass is punchy or not. For the most part, I don't really like having stuff in my ears. I prefer to listen to my phone speakers. And I just listen to them in short spurts. Whether I'm brushing my teeth, I have YouTube music playing around. If I do work sometime, I'll turn on some concentration music. But other than that, I don't like to constantly have an earbud in my ear. I'm still not 100% sure <laughs> if it's available in our country. So just do some deeper digging than me. I'm just giving through this article. That's how I kind of get my news. I just sit on the Discover page, scroll through that. And as for my home screen setup, I keep it super basic and I just throw apps into my home screen as I use them and I just rely on my muscle memory on which apps I use the most and kind of leave it there and once I start running out of space on my home screen I do try to consolidate and add more folders but in general I like to have the apps that I use the most on the front of the screen that way it'll be convenient it'll just be a one touch instead of me going into the app so when I'm sitting in the car my maps is up there even though I do have Bixby routine, so when I get into the car, it will automatically... Oh shit, I almost dropped my phone. <laughs> Luckily, I got quick reflex, so I did catch that in midair. Once I get into the car, the Bluetooth automatically connect to my car. There's the Mazda right there. And once it's connected, Google Maps automatically launch. YouTube Music also automatically launch. I have it there just in case out of habit sometimes I want to do some research on food around the area, places I want to go. I can click on that pretty easily. Messages, that's just the standard texting. And as you can see, even though this is considered a small phone these days, if you're reaching from left to right, it's okay for one-handed use. So in general, I tend to keep the apps that I use the most in this little quadrant right here that I can use without having to stretch my thumb. And if I want to reach to the top, I kind of have to slide my finger and do this. And as you can see earlier, I almost dropped my phone when just trying to tap that map button. So even though it's considered a compact phone, it is still long and kind of large. It is just compact by today's standards. Uh, so that's my messages. It is a little bit further than I like, but I don't really use it that often. Maybe whenever people text me. I would just reply to it in my notification. And whenever I get texts, I just kind of go through my notification and respond that way. Calendar is pretty self-explanatory. And Samsung forced me to use a game launcher by default. I'm not sure when this started happening, but I actually prefer to have my games on the outside instead of having to go into a launcher. But at this point, I'm used to it, I guess since they forced me to use it. So whenever I want to play a game, I just go into there and do that. Photos, pretty self-explanatory. Sheets, I actually do not use this that much. Let me just throw into a productivity folder. Podcasts, 
Twitter. Let me pull this up here, drag this down here. And then when organizing, I like to have the colors somewhat balanced. Right now, you see there's like three red in one side. Maybe I just move it around. Something like that. Bring my Twitter down. And then maybe once I find an app that I use pretty frequently, I throw this in here so that Bobby approve. I just use that when I'm going food shopping. Find healthy food recommendation. And all these other apps are pretty much self-explanatory. So these are the ones that I use the most. And then the second page, I use these somewhat often. So I try to keep everything on the main screen. And then if needed, I just go over here uh, versus going to all my app draws and just scrolling to everything. I know there are probably a bunch of apps in here that I don't use. So at some point I would probably need to go through and purge them. But there you have it. That is just a quick preview of how I usually use my phone, just reading news, setting up my home screen. And as for day 24, I started using my phone at around 12, 17 p.m. It is a busy Saturday for me, just sitting around the house, doing the usual, eating. Went to a restaurant to get some pho for lunch, doing some shopping, driving around, another solid battery day. Even though I started using the phone in the afternoon on Saturday morning, it did not die until 8.38 a.m. the next day. That's where my phone reached 4%. Got about 4 hours and 13 minutes of screen on time and over 20 hours of battery life. This is standard at this point and it's been a great experience for a small Galaxy S23. It packs great standby time and always lasts me more than a day. I can go to sleep without worrying about charging it and whenever I need to top it off in the next day, I just plug it in for 30 to 60 minutes and I can be on my way. All right guys, there you have it. This wraps up day 24 in the life of the Galaxy S23. I started a OnePlus 11 series. If you are interested, please check that out as well. But if you are not interested, maybe I'll just do more of the S23 series with the day-to-day -day video. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe and see you guys in the next video.